Wait, a, a ground and leaf type gives me fire damage? Oh, no, actually, I don't do that. What? Yeah, I lied. Why would you? I don't understand. Ladies, gentlemen, and pals of all ages, this lovely game has a million different things going on, plenty of different aspects to focus on at any given moment, and this can mean your day-to-day -day activities in the game can vary significantly. But no matter what you are doing, chances are pretty damn high that it involves pals in some way. There are various things unique to pals that can affect your experience in ways you might not expect, but probably the biggest and most unique one when it comes to pal world as a whole are the partner skills. Every species of pal has its own partner skill, some similar to each other, but all with their own purpose within the game. There's also the condensing process that exists within the game to increase the star rank of a pal by sacrificing waves of other members of their species, and doing that increases the level of the original pal's partner skill, which increases the potency of it in various ways. We've known all of these things as a base concept for a while now, but it is thanks to quite a large amount of data mining done by community members that we actually have a ton of specific numbers and information now to tell us quite a few things. What exactly does every pal's partner skill actually do, and does it get better at higher partner skill ranks? So basically I'm going to go through the majority of the information related to this, as well as organizing them by what I think are the best or most important ones to actually be aware of. And with that in mind, we have to start by talking about Sweepa and Elizabeth. These two pals have the most stackable pal damage bonuses in the game, which gives them the potential to be the most powerful pals if you build around it entirely, or at least Sweepa does specifically thanks to a bug. For Sweepa, his partner skill bonus boosts its attack and defense by 12% per Sui that is in the party as a base, and Elizabeth has the same effect but for having Bee Guard in the party. This bonus stacks additively, so the ideal setup for running either of these as a main pal is to just fill the party with the rest of their smaller versions. That said, Sweepa has a bonus ability to actually let it be mounted, which creates a definite unintended interaction that you can do using this to make literally the strongest pal to exist in the game without contest, which is if you ride your Sweepa, go to the party menu, then drop a Sui into the party, then you pick it back up again so it goes back into your party, you get the same bonus applied twice, and this sort of thing just keeps going. It's like you're snapshotting a buff, sort of, which means that you can actually just infinitely stack this bonus back to back to back on Sweepa as much as you want if you really want to leverage this bug. Then we have the secondary part of this, which is condensing for partner skill levels, and this is a bit of either a mistranslation or just mistaken information in the game in the first place, as these don't work as stated, which makes this even more interesting. The actual effect of these, then, is that the partner skill of the Sui and the Bee Guard will increase the buff bestowed on their target bonus pal, increasing the significance all the way up to partner skill level 5, with base default levels being 12% bonus to attack and defense, up to a whopping 24% for each of these in the party at partner skill level 5. On top of that, there is some incorrect wording in the partner skills for both Sweepa and Elizabeth, with the effect of condensing them actually having just a hidden bonus attack stat multiplier for the pal, unaffected by anything else, including whether or not you even have a Sui or Bee Guard in the party. This bonus being 5% bonus attack at partner skill level 2, up to 8% at partner skill level 5. So quick math, add it all together, party of either Sweepa or Elizabeth with four of their associated pal, all condensed to maximum partner skill level 5, they would gain 104% attack and 96% defense, which is pretty dang nuts. Another pal that we absolutely need to highlight for personal power is actually Gorirat, who has a pretty unique pal skill that when activated increases its own attack stat significantly. 50% boost at partner skill level 1, up to a 200% boost at partner skill 5. But worth mentioning, this only affects ranged attacks, not melee, but definitely gives us a ton of potential to be an incredibly strong pal if you use the right setup around it. Then next up, we have something that we've talked about previously on the channel in regards to player power, which is the pals with saddles that will change the player's element attack type while mounted, and specifically that there are a ton of these that secretly also raise the player attack stat when doing so. This is the full list right here, and the effect is swapping element plus 50% bonus player attack stat at partner skill level 1, scaling up to 100% bonus player attack at partner skill level 5. And specifically, you have to be mounting them for this to apply as well. There are also lesser versions of these that don't require you to be mounting, they just require the pal to be active, which are Nox for Dark, Wixen for Fire, and Anubis for Earth, each providing a much smaller 5% player 
higher attack bonus at partner skill 1, up to 10% at partner skill 5. Verdash also does this element swap, but instead of an attack bonus provides a movement speed buff while active, 20% at partner skill 1, up to 40% at partner skill level 5. Then we have a very similar subset of pals, a subcategory. These are the ones that boost the damage of a specific element while you are mounting them, which will mostly apply to their own damage that you do with the manual choice mounted attacks, with the percent increases being the same as the player attack increases on the element swapping mounts. That said, there is a slight interesting note here, which is that Frostallion and Frostallion Nox specifically both also change the player's damage type to ice or dark respectively, so they change your damage to the type that they also then boost, which of course does equate to a player damage boost as well. The most interesting part of that is something that I even missed until a comment pointed it out, but because of the way that the math works out within the game, if you are wanting to maximize your own player attack, these are actually the ideal two combat mounts. The reasoning being that increasing player attack by 100% like the other mounts do is additive with all other player attack bonuses. You go from 120% bonus attack to 220% on your bonuses, which isn't the same as just doing 100% more damage. Frostallion and Frostallion Nox effect, however, increases the damage of specifically ice and dark attacks, which is a separate multiplier compared to player attack stat itself, which means that this applies its full damage boost rather than being diminished by stacking with other damage boosts. So these are actually extremely, extremely good, especially when going against ice or dark weak pals, not to mention that it doesn't only apply to the player themselves, but also to the pal that you're riding. Then we have another synergizing subset of pals here, but it unfortunately doesn't quite work the way that I had hoped, which are the pals that passively boost element type damage by being in the party. Based on the wording of this effect, I hoped it would apply to player damage as well if it matched the element of note, but that seems to only apply to pal damage, and specifically it seems to only apply to pals who are of the type mentioned. Not just using attacks of that type, but the pals actual type as a species has to match this too. The bonuses are 10% per pal with this at partner skill level 1, up to 20% at partner skill level 5. This is the other avenue to an extremely strong singular pal that you have active in the party. You get one of the element type boosters while mounted, ones with the up to 100% bonus, fill out the rest of the party with these buffers that match, then your pal will do ridiculous damage, especially against enemies that are weak to the type of choice. On that note of player power not being affected by the elemental passive buffers, there are actually two pals that do increase the player's attack stat by being in your party passively, which are Gobfin and Gobfin Ignis. They give you 10% attack by default, up to 20% at partner skill level 5, and these do stack. So 5 fully condensed Gobfin as your party loadout is 100% player attack stat increase. There is sadly no equivalent of this quite for defense, at least not passively, though there are two pals that raise your defense when they are actively the pal out on the field fighting with you, being Warsect and Menesting. You can see the numbers here, Warsect increases defense by 5% to partner skill 1, up to 10% at partner skill 5, whereas Menesting increases it by 7% at partner skill 1, up to 14% at partner skill 5, and the main reason for this is that Warsect also has a secondary effect, contrary to what it says in its description where it for some reason claims to make the player's attacks count as fire element, it doesn't do that, but it does give the player fire damage resistance, scaling from 5% up to 10% at max partner skill level as well. After that, let's move on to more utility focused partner skills, and let's go with ride speed to begin with for the mounted pals. An interesting note here is that pal speed is a default number on each rideable pal, but every pal whose partner skill is exclusively for riding does gain bonus movement speed per partner skill rank. The rideable pals with secondary effects don't seem to get bonus speed per rank, only buffing their other abilities. So that said, this list is great information to know, but take it with a bit of a grain of salt. Just because Jet Dragon isn't on this list doesn't mean that Nightwing is a faster flying mount because it is. Because Jet Dragon is just way more than 20% faster than Nightwing as a base. That said, this is the list. Speed is boosted by 10% when going to partner skill level 2, up to 20% at partner skill level 5. And the only real takeaway from this for long-term valuable information is that Fangalope really is the absolute king of ground movement pals, as it can also be boosted in this manner despite being the fastest one to begin with. Similar to Ride Speed, we also have Glide Effectiveness, as there are a number of pals that can be used as gliders while in the party. The stats that you see here are Maximum Speed, which is the glider speed that you can actually get from starting to glide with no movement. The speed can actually be increased regardless of the pal, because gliding does carry on and forward the player's momentum when you began the action. Gravity Scale is the rate at which you fall while gliding. Lower number means better airtime. Stamina Drain is simply the amount of stamina that it drains from the player per second while gliding, and so to no surprise, Gale Claw is generally the best overall here, at least if you care about speed more than anything. An interesting note here is that Gale Claw is just under twice 
twice the speed of Kilimari, but has a four times higher gravity scaling, as well as three times higher stamina drain at max partner speed level. So while a Gale Claw will get you to a location faster than a Kilimari will, a Kilimari can get you a fair amount further, both as far as losing less height while you glide, as well as spending less stamina, even relative to the speed discrepancy between them. So Gale Claw for speed, but Kilimari is way better for distance and keeping height. Then let's talk about the list of pals that increase the item drop rate of things that you capture or kill while they are your active combat buddy. There are a bunch of these, and what they do is boost the drop rate against one specific element each. There are multiple pals for some of the different types, but they increase the drop rate equally to each other, so one isn't necessarily better than the other, at least not as far as the partner skill, with level 1 being a 40% drop rate increase, up to partner skill level 5 being an 80% increase. The idea being if you are doing something like farming pal fluid, you are guaranteed 1 per kill on a water pal, then you get a 40-80% to 80 chance at a bonus drop when using the correct pal from this list, depending on their condensing level. If you're doing a bunch of grinding and farming for materials, a problem that you could also easily run into though in the field is weight limit. The weight limit can pop up as an issue pretty frequently, but there just so happens to be a number of pals that increase player weight limit passively just by being in your party. These do have variable values depending on the specific pal, with the most effective ones being Wumpo and Wumpo Botan, who increase your weight limit by 120 base up to 160 at partner skill level 5. And these again do stack with each other for having multiple in the party for a maximum boost of 600 extra weight if you just run 5 Wumpos. And with that we only have one section left here really, which is going to be the farm, the ranch, the pals whose partner skills specifically are for grazing and grazing alone, letting them generate items for you passively and at no cost. This is the full table of these pals at various partner skill levels, and the speed at which they drop the items is actually always the same. The only thing that changes is the amount of items per drop, or in one specific case, which items they find. To understand this table, the number on the left of each level is the minimum amount that is dropped each time they give you something. The number on the right side is the maximum, with the actual result generally being anywhere within that range at random each time. For the most part, these just increase by expectable, well-scaling amounts, and the real takeaways that I have here are Cremus and Malpaca are just way better than Lambal for wool. Mao and Mao Chris do provide gold, which is neat to get for free, but even at partner skill level 5, the actual amount of gold isn't that great. You definitely do want to upgrade your mozzarinas and your chickpeas, your bee guards, all of your cake ingredient producers, help even, even Caprity if you use it for that too. And Sibilix being able to find up to 5 high quality cloth at a time is absolutely nuts efficiency wise. But there is also one pal that is not on this table, which is Vixie, and that's because they get their own unique table due to their partner skill being the ability to dig up various different kinds of items, being pal spheres, arrows, and gold. The money production scales equally with Mao, but the arrows go up to a range of only 4 or 5 per drop at partner skill level 5, which is crazy reliable arrow production. The pal spheres actually go up and then back down when you hit higher partner skill ranks, but that's because at partner skill level 4 and 5, Vixie can also start to find mega pal spheres instead of just the base ones, which of course is great because free spheres are free spheres. Every sphere has a chance of catching a pal, even if it's extremely low, if you get them to low enough health. Even a bad sphere on a higher level pal. So if you can produce these for free, even if the percentage chance to catch with them is low, they're still super valuable to get for free. You're not spending any resources. Then finally, there is the sort of active partner skill category. This includes a massive variety of different skills that are hard to compare based on damage numbers alone due to differences in fire rate, amounts of instances of damage before the partner skill runs out of juice, secondary effects of them like stun from Masanda, things like that. But the simple thing to take from this is that from partner skill level 1 up to partner skill level 5 is generally about a 100% boost in effect for every single one of these. And that just about does it for this then everyone. Again a huge shout out to Blobble on Reddit who has undertaken the majority of this data mining effort, making life easier for the whole community, honestly. My major takeaways from all of this are that I think you should keep in mind our Sweepa, Elizabeth, and Garirat have massive solo pal power potential. Gobfin are massive for boosting player damage specifically, as are the pals that change player elemental type because of the secret attack bonus they give, including Frostalian and Frostalian Noct, who are arguably better because the bonus damage from them is a separate multiplier to just the pure attack stat. There are plenty of pals that will passively buff the power of your active pal as well, letting you turn any pal that you enjoy into a main damage dealer if you build around it right and make it a real combat creature. There are lots of ways to mess around with your traversal speed, your weight limit, and your efficiency on your ranch. Oh, and never forget, Warsect is a dirty liar of a beetle. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. 
Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.